Hello everyone, we're back to playing Temtem today. We're gonna hopefully beat a dojo today. It's been... It's been a while. We've been playing this game for like three hours, four hours, and we still haven't found a dojo yet. Like, usually by Pokemon, I'm halfway through a Nuzlocke run at this point. It's taking a little bit, but we're gonna... We're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep trying to push through, try and find it. Um... Yeah, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of different Temtem yet. I, I feel... I don't know how big the world is. I know there's like 200 Temtems. I know there's a lot of different ones, but like we still haven't seen anyone really different from what we've seen in the very start. So I am a little getting a little tired of the the basic Temtems that we've been running into constantly, you know, because like these things, for example, we've seen a million times already. So why are we why are we still fighting these guys, even though it's been hours upon hours? So I wish the areas would give me a little bit more diversity, but, you know, overall, not not, uh, not that big of a complaint. But uh, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready to catch something new. I'm ready to see... I'm ready to see something new. So give me give me some new Temtems. Gert's here. Hello, hello. Hello, Emmy. <laughs> Thank you for the waffles. <laughs> Every every time, if I don't fix Pando, I thought I turned Pando off. Does it still show Pando as an option? Because I, I I turned him off. A lot of chats we had. We did have a lot of chats. It's in my rewards still. Okay, I will check that once the stream's over. Make sure that that that's not still there. Or bring him back. I, I would honestly bring him back if, if I could make him a custom thing, but I don't want a raccoon or a ghost. I want, like, a waffle or my waffle knight or something like that, you know? So I need I need options. I need something new. 80% is about Saint Gemma. You can never get too much of the saints. You know, as long as, as, long as God's still first, it's still good to, to get to your saints in, right? Like we talked about, the... Uh, Saints are much better role models than celebrities, so it never never hurts to have those good role models in your life. I have, uh, so I, I spend some time in the Christian and Catholic forums to, um, to try and guide people and help them do a little bit of my evangelizing and all that. Uh, but I gotta tell you, I, I think I've, I think I've definitely upset a lot of people today with some things that should not be, should not be, like, hard information i mean it is hard information for christians but it shouldn't be new information uh like a lot today we've been talking about uh denying oneself you know someone's talking about can i have a second job on sunday my day of rest because i want to go on a trip soon and it's it's saying that you know that's that's putting money and our own pleasure over god you, you're supposed to take sunday as a day of rest take it off that's a very very hard thing to do i get it i I've worked a few Sundays for money in my day, too, and it's, it's starting to say, no, I can't take that job because I need to have my day of rest. I need to obey the wisdom that God has given us because, obviously, God's given us wisdom for a reason. And people were pretty upset by that, and I, I'm, I'm surprised that people were upset by that because that seems like a very basic opinion, right? That it shouldn't be upsetting to other Christians to hear that. Jesus, I think, is the best role model. Agreed? Definitely. There is a book um, I struggle to get through the book, to be honest. It is a very, very hard book to read, but there is a book called The Imitation of Christ that is considered, like, one of the best books to read, period. Um, it's very hard, but it's all about that, that exact topic. Jesus is the best role model. Literally, Jesus came to Earth and showed us how to live and how to do everything, but imitating that is very, very difficult, right? So uh, if, if you can find it, Imitation of Christ is an incredible book. I know there's a lot of different versions of it. I know there's some that are in easier like to understand language, kind of like a, a King James Bible with all the these and thous versus uh, you know a more modern like NJV Bible. It has a lot more easier to digest language. So uh, if you can find it, definitely definitely read that one. It is such a good, good read. Again, I haven't gotten all the way through it. I think I'm going to pick up um, Mere Christianity next. 
Uh, I've been recommending that a lot to people, but honestly, I haven't read it. Everyone's just recommended it as like one of the best books for like the case for Christianity and kind of getting into it like as a high level overview starting sort of position. So I think I actually need to read it before I keep recommending it. So Mere Christianity is the next one on my list. Gemma is very important to me, but God has first place. That's how it should be. That, that's how it should be. <laughs> I kind of want to write a small free like ebook or something because I'm so tired of answering the same questions over and over. Because if you go to like the Christian forums, uh, people ask the same questions every day. And obviously we want to help the people as much as we can. But, you know, social media is such a bad bad place to get information from i'd like to have something that's you know pre-written and give people guidance without having to say the same thing over and over and over you know what will saint Gemma do if she lived today that is that is a hard question this is something i was talking about a little bit earlier and em emmy is the one who showed this to me uh someone made a post about how we need more modern day saints saints who drink coca-cola saints who drive cars, saints who play video games. You know, when, when you think of when you think of saints, you think of these old crusty people who lived, you know, in the in the Middle Ages or in castles or they, you know, lived in the hillside as monks. You, you don't think of the modern day saints, but we need we need modern day saints, right? We we need saints who are existing in our current world. And I think there's different challenges we have now than back then. If if we brought a saint from the past into the future, would they still be a saint? I think that's a very valid and hard to answer question because we have temptations and vices that they they couldn't even dream of, right? Just like their life is so much different than ours, you know, we, we wouldn't be able to imagine what it's like to live like them. I I don't know for certain that we could say that they would still make it to that sainthood, right? And that's that's a weird thing to say because we look at these saints as as role models, but, you know, they didn't have access to the entirety of human knowledge on their phone at any time, or, you know, the temptations we deal with of, you know, stealing time from work to go on to TikTok or, you know, pornography that was just at a, a fingertip and all these other things. So there's, there's definitely something to be said for being a product of your time. And I just don't know if you would do as well out of time just because it's so different. I would certainly hope they would still be a saint. I certainly hope that they could find a way to overcome the the problems that we have of our current century, but they're they're so far removed, right? A medieval peasant would have no a medieval peasant would have no idea what an extreme Dorito would taste like or the temptation of stuffing their face with extreme Doritos because of how good they taste, right? Like they, we have no concept of that at all. Whereas we would have no concept of, you know, having to do backbreaking labor for 18 hours a day for a king who's sitting in a castle 100 miles away and then having to go home and eat turnips because that's the only food that wasn't rotted during the crop, right? They're, they're just two, two fundamentally different lives, two fundamentally different ways of everything, so... It's, it's an interesting thought experiment to have, though, to think about those, you know, like Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas is seen as like a, a doctor of the church because of all of his teachings. But would he have been a, a doctor of the church in our modern day? Would he have not fallen into temptations? Who knows? Definitely who knows? Like to think they would. Carlo Acutis is on his way to sainthood, but hasn't been venerated yet, but it's in the process Yes, yeah, so actually, we were talking about uh, Carlo Acutis. Um, if I remember right, he is the kid who passed away at a young age, but was uh, working on computer program sort of stuffs. And obviously, it takes a, a while to become a saint, right? Like it, it takes some work to to get to that sainthood, and there's a lot of time in between and all that. So we won't see any you know, modern day saints from. You know, this decade for another 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure like one of the fastest um, sainthoods is like 40 or 50 years. Like they they make it take some time and usually for good reason. Right. Like you don't want to you, you don't want to. um Sainthood someone and something comes out about them. Right. You, you want to make sure that you're being very careful in it. 
Gemma's a modern saint in the 1900s. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider that modern because the world has changed so much just in the last 100 years and last 50 years. I mean, from the from the time it took us to land on the moon to now, I mean, look at how much technology has changed, how much TVs changed, satellites, the internet, the way we communicate, everything. The you know the modern world. I, I think realistically speaking, now if you want to say modern, began in the the 90s. Now, I, I got. I'm not just saying that because I was born in the 90s, but you know, being born before the 90s, realistically, though, the world changed so much before then, and the modern world in 2023 looks nothing like the world in you know the 70s or 80s. That's for certain. Uh, Carlos is our age. He was born in 1991, right? But he he passed away young. He passed away when he was like 13, right? He passed away really young. Do you think the internet is bad for our prayer time? Uh, it definitely can be. A Emmy and I were just talking about that, that we we both have you know that issue of you wake up and you get on TikTok or you start scrolling before you do prayers or other things because it's it's an instant dopamine hit, right? You, you can go onto the internet and find whatever you want in a matter of seconds and be entertained forever or whatever it is that you want. So it's the internet is a tool like anything else, right? You can use the internet to get wonderful insight into prayers. You can do wonderful insight into God. So I, I, I wouldn't demonize it, but it it's a tool that can be misused just like a gun is a tool that can be misused or, you know, a pipe wrench is a tool that can be misused. Uh, what will the world change after a big sun flare, new saints? There's, there's a lot of people who talk about that, right? Talk about the big EMP or what happens if the entire internet crashed and we have to go back to the good old days and things like that. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to, but, you know, you, you roll with what you got. You, you live however you got, right? We don't get a choice in that. So uh, Em and I talk a lot about that with uh, last year. There was like 200 terrorist attacks on our local infrastructure for... Um, electricity and it's like we we get no control over that right if, if someone takes out the power and we don't have power for 20 years like what are we gonna do you just gotta you gotta roll with the blows right you don't get a choice in that so in 2018 pope francis declared him venerable and his beautification process took like place on october 10th 2020 that's wonderful i'm glad they're moving him forward or a meteorite or a super volcano eruption. You know, we live we live in the place where there's always talk about the big earthquake that's going to come destroy everything. So it's inevitable. There's always going to be the thought of bad things happening. But again, we don't have a whole lot of control over that. So it's it's offering it up to God and, you know, whatever God's will be done, we will continue to make it through. We will continue to try no matter what it is and and hopefully make it. But uh, that's that's kind of all we can do. Do you really think it would take 20 years to repair the power grid from a cyber attack? Um, so not a cyber attack. What's been happening is we have um, the giant power relay stations and they've been physically going and destroying those. And those huge stations provide power to, you know, millions, if not hundreds of millions of people. And all the parts for it are custom made. So they don't have those parts on hand. So if someone happens to destroy that then then it could take years for it to get replaced because you know there's shortages of everything right now it has to be custom made put in the right place so and then while that's down it, it's a rolling problem thanks for dropping by emmy best of luck or war with putin you know i know that for a long time uh, people were worried about war with Putin and, you know, Russia being one of the great superpowers of the world. But I think um, the war with Ukraine has shown us that um, those those things were greatly over exaggerated. I'm sorry, Emmy. We can we can change the subject. We definitely don't have to, to talk about that if you don't want to. I know you got to go make dinner soon or you're going to do that anyways. So... We can definitely change the topic if you prefer, if you want to stick around or if you got other stuff to do. I understand. Nah, it's all good. You're you're gonna dip. 
I'll leave you up to maintain stats. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll see you soon, love. Do I think we're living in the end times? You know, I... I see... I see people post about that, like, daily on the Christian forums, too. And we always defer back to the the biblical passage, right? When, when we can, we should defer to the Bible, which tells us that we, we know not the time or the date, so we should always be ever vigilant for the return of the Master. So I try not to, to speculate on that too much because it, it seems that the answer has already been given to us that we shouldn't be we shouldn't be looking forward to trying to figure it out. Rather, we should always be vigilant and ready for when it does come. So that's that's kind of where I try and stand on on that. All right, we are tearing through these NPCs. I just found out in this game a really cool feature it has is once you stop at the um, whatever the version of a polka stop is is uh, you get a file, vial, something that lets you fully revive and heal your party once. So even if you're like far, far away from the um, the area, then you get one full heal. And I think that's a super nice feature. So I, I really like that. You don't need to apologize. It's completely okay to talk about whatever you want here. It's uh, like Emmy said, though, that there are certain things I, sh I should have been more conscious of that that we don't don't want to talk about as much. But you can talk about the you know the saints and God and all that as much as you want to. And this is supposed to be a Catholic channel, right? I try and try and keep it Catholic and family friendly and all that. Um, but the topics change day to day because I also like to chat with my chat. I know there's a lot of big streamers who aren't able to chat with their chat. Um, and I, I hope that never happens to me. I hope I never get to a point where I can't chat with chat. Uh, you know, it's it's a nice thought to be like, oh, I have so many followers I can't keep up. But, you know, you lose something with that. It's completely fine to chat on Discord as well. No problems there. Love the John Cena sound. Thank you for that, Dexter. I'm going to have to go listen to that. Um... Oh, I just learned something. Look at that. Okay, so when I attack him with Peck, it's a white circle. But when I attack him with Wind Burst, uh, it shows a red circle. I saw that last time and I did less damage. So the, the red circle means it's not going to do as much damage as another move. So that must be like a way that they've built in the type charts into the game that it it, um, it just warns you before you make the attack. So I'm going to have to watch that a little bit more closely because um, that could help greatly. If I have time to watch a lot. I know you sent me a couple videos and a couple things. Definitely when I have time, I'll give them a look. Um... I don't have as much time for the things these days, but you know, sometimes when I'm at work and, and it's slow, I have some time to watch things and things like that. But you know me, busy with projects, always doing, always doing something. Oh, the, the auto mod gotcha. Apparently Looney is on the, uh, the block terms. But yeah, I know you're talking about the, uh, the Mandela effect with Looney Tune tunes versus Looney Tunes. I really enjoyed the Mandela effect. You know, all all over the place. It was you know Captain Crunch was on there, uh, the Berenstein Bears, of course. There was um, Pikachu's on the Mandela effect list. Uh, so many, so many things. Fruit of the Loom. Uh, the Fruit of the Loom one is definitely the biggest one that tells me the Mandela effect is real. Like Fruit of the Loom had a cornucopia. I, I will fight anyone on that. Is the Mandela effect from God? You know, God created everything, so I I would hesitate to say no. I, I couldn't see any reason why we couldn't attribute it to God. Why? I don't know. I, I don't know what causes the Mandela effect or anything like that. You know, it's not heavily studied. There's a lot of people who just 
chalk it up to, oh, well, it's mass misremembering, but what causes it, we still don't necessarily know. So I, I, I don't think you could rule it out, uh, per se. So uh, let's see here. Take you out and feather the Calibus. What do I think of mystic things like ecstasy? Ecstasy? Like I'm not sure not sure I know the Not sure I know what you're referring to there. Part of it is people's beliefs of memories. I mean there's there's definitely memory is Memory is a fascinating thing to talk about, right? Because, like, for the longest times, our, mem our memories are way worse than we think. Oh, that's exactly. For the longest time, people, you know, relied on eyewitness testimonies in court and things like that. And, you know, if someone came into court and said, well, I saw them do this, everyone's like, oh, well, someone saw them do it, so they must have done it. Like, now we're finding out, like, people's memories can be so easily influenced. You can put fake memories in people's heads and... And things like that, that it's just, it's, it, it's incredible how bad our memories are. And like, it, it's even as easy as like, your parents can be like, hey, do you remember this as a kid? And if they tell you that enough, like, eventually you're going to start to believe it and plant this fake memory that you, you truly remember as if you were there because you were always told that it was there, but it never was. And then, like, we find that the, the you know, leading questions in court and stuff, that if you ask questions a certain way or if you do things a certain way, then it influences the way that people look at it. Um, it, it it's just it's truly fascinating how how bad our memory is and how it all works. Even something simple like um, on the on the Catholic forums the other day, someone was asking how, oh, I don't mean to use that, how we felt about, uh, in the news, there's been a few times where uh, people are talking about uh, priests, quote, demanding uh, underage minors to confess their, their sexual sins to them. And the word demand in there really changes the whole like context of the sentence, right? Because a priest can't demand that you confess. A priest can only be there for if you want to confess. But by just saying, oh, well, priests are demanding that children do this, all of a sudden the entire context has changed and people are like, oh, that's gross. That's terrible. When that, no, that's just, that's how confession works. That's how confessions has always worked. But because you're using very certain words in certain contexts, you're changing the entire meaning of the sentence, and now people are actively against it. It's kind of like the there was a famous study. I'm going to call it a study. It was a college experiment where a bunch of college students went out and um, did a, a, a petition for ending women's suffrage because people didn't know, you know, suffrage means voting. And so they were able to get a ton of people to agree to and say that they want to end women's suffrage because of the context they put it in, you know, changing a couple meanings of words here and there and presenting a very certain way, people changed their minds on something that they obviously didn't believe just like that. It is, it's crazy how how easily people are manipulated on all that. And that's a, that's a new series I've been doing on, uh, not TikTok, but mostly YouTube shorts now, is, is calling out the... Um, all the manipulation, especially from the Christian content creators. And it's super gross. All these things you see that are just like, oh, like if you love Jesus or you have to comment and subscribe to tell God how much you love him. Like there are people who struggle with religious OCD. They struggle with the idea that they have to always you know, tell God they love them. They genuinely think that they're in danger because you made a post that said, if you don't like this then you don't love God. And so it's just this really gross form of manipulation. And so I, I've taken it upon myself. No one else seems to be doing it. So I'm going to I'm going to start calling these people out. And the one today that I did was a guy who literally said, do you think Jesus died on the cross and was tortured so that you could scroll past this video? It's just like, dude, Jesus didn't die on the cross so you could make a TikTok. like that's. That's such a, a gross way of looking at our beliefs, our religion, everything else. Like, I'm so, 
I, I was I was offended by it. <laughs> Truly, that was the most outrageous thing I had seen. Um, I want to catch this thing, so hopefully we're not going to knock it out in one blow. That's half damage. That's what we wanted. Okay. Scarawat. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna catch that. We're gonna we're gonna catch the Scarawat. We'll throw two Tem cards if we have to. Here's a question. Do you believe people can go to heaven without praising or practicing religion? So... Yes, but I'm going to put a, put an asterisk on that because I, I don't want to just be like, yep, that, that's the final answer. So we know that there is a thing called like a baptism of desire that we see like uh, of the thief on the cross. Uh, who, you know, didn't really know much of Jesus, didn't really live in Jesus' time, but was up next to Jesus and basically wanted to get into heaven and was sent to heaven just for asking Jesus to go to heaven. We also know that uh, there are people who, you know, never, never know Jesus or never knew about the religion. So there, there definitely is, the easiest way to phrase it is, God's mercy is infinite and God ultimately gets to choose who gets to go into to heaven or uh, you know, anywhere else. So that's all up to God. By practicing Catholicism and practicing what we believe in, we believe that we're doing something that's pleasing to God and that we're helping our chances of getting into heaven, essentially, is the, the idea of it, it's pleasing to God, it's the right way to live for us, it helps our life, and it increases our chances of getting to heaven, which is the ultimate goal, right? Definitely do praying. Uh, I try and uh, pray morning, rosary, and night. And I, I know I was talking a little bit about this earlier, potentially for Lent, doing um, more prayer, like doing the the liturgy of the hours or like a monk schedule where you pray, you know, the morning, 9 a.m., noon, hour of mercy, compliant at night. Like there's, there's a lot of praying to being a monk, so I'm considering that as well. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go catch real Pokemon. Someone said that they just updated Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And if they updated it so that there's no battle animations, they put it in the menu that I can remove that. I might be willing to give it another try, to be honest. Meditation good for Catholics? Uh, it depends on on the meditation. As a whole, yes, meditation is very good for Catholics. But it's it's a very certain kind, right? Because a lot of people, when they hear meditation, they think... Eastern meditation, and they, they bring in the idea of balancing your chakras or sitting in certain positions to improve the, the flow of energies and key through your body. Basically, yeah, like Buddhism and things like that. And obviously that's not uh, not good for Catholics to practice, but the, the idea of quieting your mind and sitting still and just thinking on one thing, such as God, of course that's good. That, that's you know, what monks have done for thousands of years. They haven't updated yet. I don't think there's a big update coming next month, but no details yet. I thought the I thought they were fixing the FPS. I heard that they were doing that at the very least, uh, fixing the the frames per second issue. So it'll be a fairly big big update just for that. I meditate on music. Is that strange? I don't think so. Um, that's kind of the idea behind Gregorian chants, isn't it? Just a, a, a strong, repetitive music to help you to to try and quiet your mind. Is praying not a kind of meditation? Um, I, I've heard it referred to as that way, but I I would say that they're different. You know, meditation, you're trying to quiet your mind and, and focus on something while praying is more like a, a conversation. I, I guess you could say that praying is a kind of meditation. Not all of meditation is prayer and not all prayer is meditation. But I, I think there could definitely be some overlap in there. Ooh, those Calibus are very strong. Those things are hard to take down. They have a lot of HP. I have to be more careful of those going forward. And they poison you when you hit them, so they're they're all around monsters. 
All right, that Willump. We want one of those Willumps, so if we find one of those, we're definitely going to catch one of those, the Willumps. Also praying you have to focus on God. Definitely. I think uh, I was just talking to Emmy about uh, Father Mike Schmitz had a really wonderful um, quote, and I I'm probably going to butcher it because I don't remember it offhand, but it was essentially the idea that uh, don't pray for a better relationship with God. Praying is the relationship with God. And I really, really like the the way that he phrased that. That, you know, that that, that is your key... That is your key relationship with God, is, is that you know, praying is talking to God. That is that is what you need to do, to, to have that, that direct conversation, to have that direct link to God. And I think that was just a really wonderful insight. You know, Father Mike Schmitz is just a brilliant mind. I would not be surprised. I think Father Mike Schmitz is definitely going to be made a saint if he keeps on the road that he is currently. And I also think that uh, he will potentially even be made a um, doctor of the church for his teachings, his insight, the Bible in the year, the catechism in the year. I mean, he's single handedly helping Catholics across the world to understand our religion on a deeper level. That's that's some Pope level stuff, you know. What do you think of ecstasy? I, I don't know anything I have to assume you're not talking about the drug. That's the only thing I can think of when you say ecstasy is the drugs. So I don't, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> All right, are we done? Are we done taking these guys out? I feel like I've just been wandering and smacking things for hours. Like, are we gonna, are we gonna do anything else? I guess that's all a Pokemon game is at the end of the day, right? Is doing gym battles and smacking things, but I'd like to do something else. I'd also like to see some new Temtems already. Like I said, we've, we've been seeing a lot of the same Temtems over and over again, and I'm ready for ready for something new. Like that guy, he's got a giant pink Temtem up there. I want that. Where's the giant pink Temtems? All right. Should be a pretty easy battle here. We're hurt, but I think we're going to be able to... Oh, excuse me. Do just fine here. It's not the drug. Okay, so what is it then? Well, those things are worse than Kakunas and Metapods with their, their healing up. It's a state of mystic by praying a lot of meditation. It's mystic things. Some of the saints, uh, they say they see Jesus or other saints. Hmm. Never heard of it, so I couldn't couldn't say much on it. I mean, that that sounds wonderful. Uh, I know the. I'm pretty sure it's the Jesuits. The Jesuits have a form of prayer where they are, um, like reading the Bible and they're imagining themselves in there and they're trying to get themselves in a state of mind where like they can smell what was around and see what was around and their 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 mind starts to to fill in the blanks and add what was or was not what will be or will not be and apparently as I say it's a really powerful form of prayer but I'm very very skeptical of it because I could see you know obviously being able to to actually live a scene out of the Bible would be absolutely incredible but also you know an, an untrained mind or someone who tends to have their mind wander or things like that might then get a wrong interpretation or, uh, you know, they think they got a private revelation, but they really didn't. And now they have this misconstrued belief. And, you know, I just, it worries me a little bit. Not saying it's a bad thing, just that I, I, I can see issues with it, you know? Uh, this scale needs some better moves. These these are all awful. I guess we'll tail strike. Saint Gemma had two when she was in that state, and she sits on the bed or on the ground. She doesn't know if there are people around her. She didn't feel if there was a candle under her hand. That takes some intense devotion. That is that is for certain. Very impressive. 
All right, take this thing down. Thank you. All right, did we already use our file? We're we're about time overdue for some healing, so the party is pretty wounded. Hopefully, we have not used it yet. Perfect. Back up. Kind of like a trance. Yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Is a, a trance would be the word I'd, I'd say. That, that sounds about right. All right. Oh, this is the, the trainer, right? They're relaxing here after surfing. This woman appears with minions asking questions about hidden treasure. Ganged up and threw her in the cell. Okay, how do I get you out of there? Lady Lottie has a key. Okay. So is that the first is that the first boss, Lady Lady Lottie? Is that finally we get a take on a Hoka Master? She also sometimes had visions. Alright, let's run. I think that would be absolutely terrifying to have yeah, well, obviously, what a blessing to have prophetic visions from God, but also how terrifying to be not burdened with it, but burdened with that task. Like, you think you think Christianity is unpopular right now? Imagine trying to actually prophesize. Like, woo! All right, two versus one. What do we got here? That's one of those starter Pokemon's, right? So that's a. That's a fighting type. Let's try and take him out fast. Take him out one move before he can hurt us. Mmm, don't think it's gonna happen. Ooh! Yeah, that thing... That thing's got some damage. I also tell you, sometimes St. Gemma is in my dreams, but that is a dream, or maybe God. It can be both or not. Yeah, dreams are dreams are really hard when it comes to that, interpreting what what is dream, what is not, what has meaning, what doesn't have meaning, that sort of thing. That's also a very common question that gets asked on the, the Christian forums, is, you know, what does this dream mean? And more often than not, you know, it's... The answer is disappointing, but, you know, it doesn't doesn't mean anything, right? Like, humans tend to find patterns in anything because that's that's how our brain is wired right we our brain is hardwired to look for patterns and so we try and find meaning in anything and dreams that are especially hard to find meaning in or patterns in we'll sit there and obsess over trying to understand it as much as we can and i know it has a lot to deal with like memory and how your body processes memory so you know as we were just talking about how terrible memory is so adding dreams on top of that is just rife with not fully understanding how it all works for you know for as good as science is there's still a lot of things that science doesn't know um which is a shame but you know we'll we'll maybe get there someday hopefully i don't i think if someone doesn't know saint Gemma and she appears in a dream it's more of a miracle for me than when she's in my dream because it's normal for my brain it's hard to say. I, you know, I know. Um, when it comes to miracles, there's there's a lot of like private revelations and things like that. And I know that people really like their private revelations. And it's hard to say what's actually a miracle and not. You know, that's why I like to look at, you know, look to the church for guidance on miracles. Because when the when the pope or the church declares, you know, a miracle, it's a lot more easier to swallow. Because th that means there's, you know, some investigation into it, some proof in it, you know? But uh, there was... Catholic Answers was talking about private revelations not long ago. Uh, and that, you know, we shouldn't just dismiss them. Because obviously God is going to reveal things to all of us. And, and we may not know what those are going to be or what it is for that person. But it doesn't mean to dismiss it, right? You know, the power of God is literally infinity. It's It's infinite, so... Those private revelations and such can definitely be a snagging point for uh, some people. I visited Lords. Do you know it? Yes, our uh, our holy water is from Lords. Um, 
it's hard to get holy water around where we're at. I mean, all the all the churches are supposed to have holy water. But for some reason, most of our churches around us don't provide holy water, so it's very hard to get our hands on, so I don't mind paying for it every now and then from a legitimate source, but you know, holy water should should be free. It should should always be free. Um, let's keep going. I don't want to run all the way back through here. So let's use up some more items and hope we can get through. Through this mess. Like, hopefully there's a Pokemon healer or something in here. Like, these areas are way bigger than Pokemon. Like, you get a Pokestop so easily in Pokemon, and Temtem just, it's a marathon. You're going and going and going between trainers and everything else like is well a non-stop marathon like i just said like it doesn't end kind of had an experience of a miracle uh, i was in water uh bath water there was a priest i took a look at a mary statue and they put you under the water you came out dry these areas are brutal yeah they, this is a this is an endurance match like has has anyone has anyone done a Temtem Nuzlocke? Because uh, these are brutal. I don't think you could do a Temtem <laughs> Nuzlocke. I need to do some raids, but all of my Pokemon suck. <laughs> I, I'm i pretty sure my Pokemon are worse off than yours, but that's because I didn't make it past like the first area. <laughs> One of the miracles I want to learn more about, and there's a guy in our church who has just absolutely, absolutely wonderful Marian devotion, like wonderful, holy, pious man. He has a whole presentation on um, the Eucharistic miracles, and there's there's a few around, and I've honestly never never looked into it, but there there claims to be verified by the church. A few instances where the the Eucharist, when you know they, they they take the host and put it up, has actually changed its substance and had heart tissue within what used to be the the cracker, the wafer. And again, I haven't looked into these at all, but I I've heard that these are verified by you know scientists, by third parties have come to these and looked at them and said, yes, this is a genuine, unsolvable mystery how heart tissue ended up on this host. And so I, you know, I, I want to have faith, and I know they've declared it miracles. I'd like to look at those studies and, you know, you know proof and all that sort of thing. But that sounds like an absolute wonderful uh, thing for the faith, right? Same thing with, like, the, the shroud. I know a lot of people get excited talking about the shroud, um, and the, these artifacts that are, that are so hard to tell. Are they real? Are they not real? What are they? Uh, are you at least going to do the Greninja raids? Uh, I'm not going to do any of the raids. I, I don't have any Pokemon that are raid worthy, to be honest. They're just still like level 10, 20. No longer afraid of raids. <laughs> oh, these electric Temtems are... Really taking it to me. That two times damage. That venomous claw has not uh, has not worked once to actually envenom anything. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if venomous claws are able to actually venom anything. Uh, you don't have tag anymore of Catholic. I don't have the Catholic tag in there anymore. I should. Wonder what happened to it. I know sometimes things just disappear, so I wonder if it's just one of those things where Twitch made something disappear. It happens. There's always technical difficulties. Always something that goes wrong. Uh, scale, go in. I've uh, built a few for them, but I refuse to spend all my time and money building for different raids. Alright, scale, go take down that thing. It's weak. You should be able to one-shot it. Oh, they're buffing each other. That's not good. Alright, 
Last one. Invigorated. Stamina costs 50% less. Who's invigorated and why? That's a great buff, but who got it and how and why? So I am from the dojo. We need to talk. Alright, where... Isn't this where I just were? was? Did I go the wrong way? Oh, I did. Okay. There's a battle down there. Up here. Come on, give me... Give me something. Give me a healing. Anything. Holy cow, you want me to go through three more trainers? Oh my goodness. Oh wait, are there emotes? <laughs> I did not know you could dance. I guess that's important. It's important in the game to have a dance emote. Alright, I guess we're running all the way back to town. Um, to heal up, because I just went through like 20 trainer battles, and you think they would have a little bit of mercy on us, but, uh, nope. So, here we go. You get an exhilarating 10 minutes of gameplay of me backtracking all the way where I came from. Exciting, isn't it? Like, I've never thought this in a Pokemon game before, but I'm almost to the point where I'm like, maybe I should just let my entire team get knocked out so I'm automatically teleported back to the start. Like, Oh my goodness, I hate that too. I hate how the screen shifts directions like that and I accidentally go the wrong way. That's, that's a major annoyance as well. Like, I get that the, you're going from one stream to the other and it's continuing, but... It's annoying. <laughs> Alright. We're just going to keep running from everything. Our Pokemon are all... Our Temtems are already way over-leveled. Everyone's hurt, like... I wonder... Maybe I can talk to her. Maybe she'll heal up my Pokemon. Maybe if I talk to her, will she... I know sometimes, like, in the newer Pokemon games, they gave us that capability where they said, you know, trainers can heal people, so... Maybe I'll talk to her and see if she can do that so I don't have to run all the way back. Fingers crossed. Um, finger crossing failed. I was really, really hoping for that, but... I guess not. <laughs> Be crazy if she battled you. I, you know, I've got I've got two Temtems still decently alive. I, I might be able to pull one out. Oh, an item. The Sea Queen, a sticker. Okay, found a sticker. Did I go the wrong way? Um, apparently I went the wrong way. Uh, how do I get out of here? <laughs> Help, I'm trapped. Oh man, it's getting hot in here in this room. I shouldn't complain about that since we didn't have heat and it was freezing in here, but... It's starting to get warm in here. Seized. Won't be able to use its equipped gear. Okay. Strange, but okay. Is it here? Ah, we found it. 
We found the way out. And make a quick change to our team. We're going to grab Scarewatt. And you're going to move there. Oh, excuse me. Okay, we need... Okay, um, apparently that's what we needed. Smoke bombs allow you to teleport to the last safe place you needed. Uh, yeah, we're going to buy a few of those. That would have been nice to know about before I went all the way through all of that. But, you know, thanks, game. Buy some Tem cards. All right, I guess I guess all of my complaining was for nothing because they had already thought of how to fix that and they just neglected to neglected to account for a player like me who would just run headlong into the dungeon without first talking to the item lady. So that that's on me. So forget about the complaints. That was my bad. I'll find something else to complain about, I'm sure. Alright. I need to bring in my other dude to start leveling him up too, I guess. So... Well, he probably won't be very effective in here since a lot of these creatures are lightning creatures too. I'm also starting to think that we don't get evolutions in this game. Because my starter, Temtem, is level 23. Yeah, yeah, level 23, and he has not, not evolved at all. So it's it's kind of weird because, you know, I know we've we've agreed that this isn't just like a ripoff, right? It's it's its own it's its own thing, but usually in Pokemon ripoffs there's um evolutions or digi evolutions or Whatever you know, name they come up with, it's it's super weird that that doesn't doesn't exist in this game. Because I've also seen there's there's a bird that looks suspiciously like the starter. They evolve. A lot of them are higher levels, though. Okay, so they do evolve, but it's like 30s and 40s, not not level 18. That is driving me absolutely nuts. <laughs> Okay, well, as long as they evolve, because I was thinking, like, it's weird that they don't evolve, because everyone always has, like, some sort of evolution, because Pokemon did it, so... I'm glad it exists. I am so done fighting those things. Get me out of this area. Give me my first badge. Let me meet some new Temtems. I am ready, ready for the next thing. <laughs> they're, they're haunting me. They're like Zubats. They just won't leave me alone. Why Zubat? Why? What's up, Gert? All right, we're going to skip all these trainers. We don't need them. We're already way over leveled. Okay, you know what? This thing has engaged us in a fight like five times in a row. We will give it a warrior's death. Here you go, Scale. This is what you wanted. You, you wanted a warrior's death. You may have it. Is that what you wanted? Do you, do you feel better now? Let that serve as a, a warning to the rest of your scale family to not mess with me. To let me just get through the darn cave. Okay, at least it's something different, right? I guess mission mission accomplished. <laughs> we got we got something different. That's all all I ever wanted. Do I feel better now? 
Yeah, I think so. I I got good sleep last night. The last the last few days have been really bad for sleep for me for some reason. So I I took some Nyquil stuff to to get some good sleep last night and slept for like twelve hours. So. It was much needed. You slept bad? Now let's take out the duck. Let's try and one-shot it. Perfect. Now I know you're saying that you think you have the flu. I, I know that, like... COVID's been really bad, and it's only gotten worse. There's, there's just so much news coming out of, like, China. A bunch of passengers coming out of China have have COVID, and there, there's just a whole lot, of, whole lot of issues going around with that. So I thought we were in the clear, but apparently we're not. So hopefully it's just the flu and not COVID, because I finally got that myself, and it was, it was not a good time, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Uh, let's take out the Kalazu. Bring in Tataru. There's also, uh, since we've been talking about Catholic stuff, there was a movie that came out in 2022 that was based on Padre Pio. And... It won some independent film awards, but also, like, it came out in 2022, and it hasn't it hasn't been to theaters, and it's not on DVD, and apparently they're having a really hard time finding a distributor to distribute the content, and, like, Netflix and Hulu and all those places haven't, haven't picked it up yet, which is really strange, because you got glowing awards but because of that movie Shia LaBeouf converted to Catholicism and apparently there's a lot of controversy around that and a lot of rumors don't know if this is true but a lot of rumors are that the companies don't want to pick up that movie because of the the association like oh it converted Shia LaBeouf so if we if we send this movie out then people are going to think we're trying to convert them um, so we're, we're not going to distribute this movie and put our names on it because we don't want to risk being associated with converting people to Catholicism, which is definitely strange, but, and again, that's, that's all rumors. So that there's no, there's no, don't take that as fact. That's just the rumors that are circulating right now. Do I know TBC like tuberculosis? Is that is that the acronym of TBC? Because when I think of TBC, I think of the Burning Crusade from World of Warcraft. Maybe that's just because I'm a a product of my time, <laughs> which I forgot to cancel. So I bought a month of World of Warcraft that I didn't want. So I guess I gotta go play. Gotta go play that because. Well, I bought a month of it, so I guess I have to. Can't let it go to waste. Tuberculosis. I don't know a whole lot about tuberculosis, other than it was a terrible thing that took a lot of lives. I know there's a college near us that used to be a tuberculosis hospital. Um, we, we went up there as a part of our uh, Transcendence Paranormal podcast to kind of poke around and investigate, but I don't know that we found found anything worth talking about. Do I know people with it? No, I don't know anyone who's had tuberculosis. That's probably a good thing. Like I said, I know that it's terrible, so I wouldn't want anyone to get it. St. Gemma died with tuberculosis at the age of 25. The only modern thing I know about tuberculosis is I'm pretty sure it was featured in Red Dead Redemption 2, because I'm pretty sure that's what... uh. Arthur had was tuberculosis, if I'm not mistaken. So that's that's about my extent of knowledge on it. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure if you haven't seen Red Dead Redemption 2, Emmy has been talking about streaming that. So 
if you want to watch Red Dead Redemption 2, she may have a playthrough coming at some point on, on that. Bug her about that. <laughs> Not that she has time to stream all the way through that game. And hopefully, you know, if she gets this job that she's looking at, you know, that, that's a good reason not to have time to do it, but it's a good game. Though I wouldn't call it a 10 out of 10. And this is this is something I know that a lot of people disagree with me on and get upset about. Is they, they want to call Red Dead Redemption 2 a perfect 10 out of 10 masterpiece of a game. And it is a wonderful game. Wonderful game. But a 10 out of 10, in my opinion, in order to be a 10 out of 10, in order to be a absolutely perfect game, I feel like you have to contribute something that defines a genre or forever changes a genre like um, Doom, the original Doom. The original Doom is a 10 out of 10 because pretty much every FPS after that borrows something from Doom. It it defines definitively made the FPS genre what it is now. And certainly there, there was Quake and Duke Nukem and Castle Wolfenstein and a few other first-person shooters that had happened at the time. But Doom definitively defined the genre. You know, Pac-Man. I'll give Pac-Man a perfect 10 out of 10 because, one, it, it's one of the greatest games of all time, but it defined an entire genre, an entire being of arcade games. Mortal Kombat 1, 10 out of 10, defined the fighting genre. Street Fighter 2, also 10 out of 10, redefined the fighting genre and added to it. So, I, again, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a great game, but I don't know that it actually defined anything in the genre. I don't know that it actually added anything to the genre that we didn't already have. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me, but the only thing I can think of that Red Dead Redemption 2 has that most of those other games don't have is a, a really fine attention to detail, but I don't really know that that counts, you know? Is it Looney Tunes with two O's or Tunes with a U? I know that it's Tunes with a U because it's supposed to be a play on Merry Melodies, which was their competitor. However, I remember it being the double O because it was Looney, L-O-O, -O, and then Toons, T-O-O, -O, and that made more sense to me. So I remember it one way, but I know that it's T-U-N-E-S. But there's, there's like a whole Mandela Effect uh, quiz that's wonderful that floats out there. Maybe if we have time, we'll have to grab that. Um, Okay, there's, there's my next complaint. Uh, the, the move learning thing just throws it on you, and I've accidentally learned way too many moves because it just like it just throws it at you with no warning or anything like that. Like, that's bad. I wouldn't call you wrong, but I don't define 10 out of 10 as perfect. What would you define 10 out of 10 as? All right, let's try this new move we just learned. We just wasted or got rid of Humiliating Slap for multiple pets, so... Okay, that, that did some damage, so maybe it's not a waste. Maybe it's a good thing to have. <laughs> Alright, is this the boss? Please tell me this is the boss. We just fought like five more trainers. That looks like a boss. That definitely looks as a boss. So let's, uh, let's balm up a little bit. And let's take on Lady Lottie. Aw, uh, do we have to take out more henchmen? Oh, ugh, really? <laughs> can I ask you something? Do you have a disorder, if I can ask? Depends on what you call a disorder. Um, I, I definitely have some issues with anxiety. I definitely struggle with anxiety. Um, that would be on my list of disorders, but uh, nothing else comes to mind. Does, does it look like I do? Is there, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> Had a call with your dad. Uh, what did what did I miss in the last 20 minutes or so? 
I could agree with genre defining or standout, but consider this people love the album Purple Rain. I would say it's a 10 out of 10, but it's not perfect because I love rap doesn't take away from it. I I don't know the album Purple Rain, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about there. Is that I, I'm going to look like a total total butt here. Is that um, Prince? Um, Bubble, what did you miss in the last 10 minutes well, or 20 minutes? Well, I've been complaining about the game a lot. <laughs> so you've missed a lot of complaints about the game for the most part. Uh, I thought maybe some ADHD, you know, my wife would be, would be inclined to probably believe that <laughs> I've never been tested, so I couldn't tell you for certain, but I'm pretty sure Emmy would agree with that on at least some level. So <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Am, am I wrong? Is Purple Rain not? It's either that or Pink Floyd, right? Like. It has to be one of those two. The the album Purple Rain. Who makes the album Purple Rain? <laughs> My music knowledge is garbage. You you all should know this by now. Y'all have watched me long enough. You should know this. I, I need to sit down. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that like chocolate rain? <laughs> I don't I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I I am terrible with old school movies and music. Those those are two two things I am very bad at. Um knowing what is what so i apologize in advance <laughs> i've had enough waffles for the day time to retire <laughs> Ooh, times four damage i haven't seen a times four damage before not even surfing lady was this tough All right, do we have to fight her now? My name is what? All right, I guess we have to fight her, so. Okay, I guess we have to Google it. Um, purple Rain. Purple Rain. Yeah, see, Purple Rain was made by Prince. I was I was right. I I knew what I was talking about. Right? Or is there is there multiple purple rains? Alright, let's let's heal up a little bit. That was probably a good move to heal, because uh, we just took took a little bit of a beating there. Ooh, Totoro, no, 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 no. I guess we'll we'll bring you back up. Why do they hate my Totoro so much? There should be no question about who made the purple rain. I got it right though. I got it right, even if it was a guess. Okay, so this will probably probably make you even more upset. I can't name one Prince song. I don't think I've ever actually listened to to Prince like at, at all. I yeah, I, I can't name a single Prince song. I couldn't tell you anything it sounds like. I I don't think I've ever listened to Prince. So <laughs> reported. <laughs> that is my second most upsetting musical opinion. My first most upsetting musical opinion is that the Beatles are overrated. I do not like the Beatles. I can acknowledge what they have done for the musical genre. 
Uh, but I, I've never listened to a Beatles song and thought to myself, like, hey, I should listen to that again. I really like that. Like, I just, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. You're not building a good case for yourself. <laughs> okay, let me let me put it to you this way. Let me put it to you this way. For musical tastes, one of my favorite bands of all time is Insane Clown Posse. So that should tell you everything you need to know about my musical tastes right there. Is it normal to have sometimes a time where you're not busy with the faith? Definitely. Definitely. It's it, you, As much as we talk about having that relationship with God and that relationship with Christ, you know, we, we don't spend our entire days in in prayer, in faith, and all that sort of thing. That's something, something we can get better with, right? We don't want to be distracted all that much, but it, it's just a simple reality of of life that it's not something that's always on the forefront of our our minds and for a whole period um for that if it's a long period of time i would suggest looking up something called the dark night of the soul that is a wonderfully written poem that deals exactly with that i'm trying to become a better person you're testing me right now okay okay Hear me out. And I know that nothing ever good comes from someone saying hear me out, but hear me out. The Insane Clown Posse is a Christian band. Not only that, they are one of the most brilliant Christian bands that has come around in a long time. And while their music is a little bit more on the offensive side, I think that they have something valuable to contribute to the conversation. And I think their their work is quite brilliant, actually. Like the, the story about Jesus and the lost son, uh, the prodigal son story, that is one of the parables that I struggled with the absolute most, to be honest. Uh, the prodigal son was very hard for me because, you know, in essence, when you read the prodigal son, it, it's a story about a kid who runs away, gets everything, squanders it all, comes home and gets everything back. And you're like, well, but why? Why is that a good story? Why? Why are we supposed to feel good that the brother who's done everything right all of his life gets nothing and gets scolded and the guy who messes up gets everything? But we see that there's there's two things in there. One, the son who stayed home gets to spend a lot more time with his father, which in this story would be the father. And spending time with God is worth more than any earthly thing you get. So you do get your rewards still. But also it's about you know celebrating other people coming home to Christ and, and letting go of that anger that those thoughts of oh well they got to sin and do everything that they wanted to but i didn't get to like it, it shouldn't be looked at that way and that's what that parable tries to to teach us but it is it is a very hard parable without a doubt i'm sorry i'm testing you dexter but i will stand by it i love the insane clown posse i definitely enjoy them as a band if you're one of my younger listeners or you have you know children around do not look them up absolutely do not look them up uh, but when you're alone, they're worth giving a listen to and a try to, because they are, they are a brilliant, brilliant band. And I know it's popular to hate on them, but I think they've got some stuff that's worth talking about. And I will stand by that. And I'd rather listen to Insane Clown Posse over the Beatles any day of the week. After Gemma, I have another favorite hero. Joan of Arc. I like Joan of Arc. But she's not a saint. Okay, who is it? Oh boy. Um, we are gonna get knocked out here soon. Our our temtems are really weak. Oh, we're hanging in there with one HP. <laughs> one HP. Anne Frank. Do you know her? Definitely know Anne Frank. That is. That is a story of, of courage and overcoming, if anything, is. That is by far the boldest thing I've ever heard. I admire your courage, but I'm absolutely fuming right now. 
<laughs> use the heal file, it heals your whole team. I thought I already used that, but you're right. I might I might not have used that yet. Ooh. That was pretty good. Did I see your pictures of Auschwitz? Yes, I did see your pictures of Auschwitz. I was also kind of on that topic. Um, something interesting to see. Someone had posted a um, a couple pictures of their kids playing at Auschwitz, like playing on some of the, the things there, and people online were getting really, 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 really upset that the kids were playing there. And um, one of the workers comment on there saying that they they don't allow that shaming that if kids want to come to Auschwitz and play on the equipment everything is allowed there because everyone experiences grief differently and everyone gets over the grieving process a different way so if if that's your way of grieving they allow it and i thought that was that was mighty bold of them but also like i that, that's hard for me right like you you know how heavy Auschwitz is. You know all these things of the Holocaust. You know all these terrible stories. And to let kids just like run around and play there, your first instinct is to say, well, no, no, you're that's that's not allowed. That's a terrible thing. But at the same time, they're they're absolutely right that like if that's how you're getting over the grief or dealing with those huge emotions that you're feeling there, then that is that's valid and you shouldn't let someone else tell you no. So I thought that was a really interesting uh tidbit. I'm definitely talking to my therapist about you this week. <laughs> well, that's, I don't know if I'm proud to say it or not, but I'm pretty sure that's two different therapists who hear about me across the year. Then, <laughs> What about making selfies? You know, I, again, I would personally judge someone doing that and maybe I'm wrong for that. I don't see why a selfie is needed at, uh, Auschwitz, but if that's if that's a part of grieving and understanding and learning and growing, then then who am I to say no? That's wrong, you know. I, that's something I, I'm big enough to admit that maybe I just don't understand it. Um, but I I don't see the necessity for it. I, I I would have a hard time making a case for someone saying I need a selfie at Auschwitz because of XYZ. Like, I, I just have a hard time buying that, but I, I'm open to hearing reasons why someone would need that. I'm pretty sure I just lost two followers talking about ICP, so apparently you're not alone, Dexter. <laughs> oh, we need to buy some of the scents, too. Get those zoo bats off of me. All right, we're running back home now. We healed up. Now we got to go back to the dojo. Did they give me a surf... Oh, well, apparently I'm fighting this guy now, too. Thought maybe they'd give me a surfboard so I could take the easy way back, but maybe not. Excuse me. Do I know some monk or nun orders? Uh, well, we have the, the famous Benedictine monk order that's near us here in Mount Angel. Um, we've also visited the Trappist Order Abbey, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Byzantines, um, Passionists. I've heard the term Passionists before, but I, I don't I don't know off the top of my head any Passionists that I actually know. Oh. We need to catch that thing. What is a barn she? We need that. I want a barn she. All right. Please tell me I have a surfboard and I can skip running all the way back to town. No, the surfing lady did not give me a surfboard. That is mighty rude of her. Do I get a mount eventually? Do I... Do I eventually get something that makes me... Ooh, look at that fox. Ooh, that was pretty. I want to ride on one of my Temtems to make things faster. St. Gemma wanted to be a part of it, but she was too ill to join. 
I mean, it, it definitely makes sense. I know a lot of people don't make a whole lot of sense of it. The idea of like, well, why can't you be a monk if you're sick? But like a lot of the, the brotherhood and, and monkhood and the sisters rely on each other to take care of the abbey and everything else. So if you're too sick to be able to do your duties, then I, I definitely understand why they wouldn't allow that to come into the order because they, they need you to be able to pull your weight, you know? Ooh, these are two new Temtems. Okay, we've been asking for new oh, one new Temtem. We need to catch the the platy pet. We want the platy pet. Kaboom! Down that goes. And platy pet. Don't don't one shot it. Don't one shot it. Perfect. All right, throw our Tem cards. Plotty Pet is definitely their mascot. I don't know. Looks like it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. We can replace our one duck with another duck. <laughs> we have got a lot of ducks. I guess you could say we've got our ducks in a row. I need I need a soundboard so I can get the CSI Miami the, the loud yeah after making horrible puns. <laughs> All right. I think we're getting close to the end of the stream here. I think once we make it back to town, I'm going to save and and we'll do our prayer and end there. We've been going almost for an hour and a half. That's that's longer than usual. It's, it's longer than I've done in a while. Bad jokes and bad music taste. <laughs> Ooh. We're almost there. We're almost out of this mess. Uh, do I know what? I must have missed something. What do I know? Down goes the birds. I guess I should be leveling up my electric Pokemon Temtem right now, shouldn't I? Let's put you. You go there. You go up here. And you go there. Okay. Let's level them up. No point in getting so far ahead. Oh, well, I guess we made it to town. Um, settings? I guess it auto saves, doesn't it? Who is who is at you the whole time? I'm not sure I understand. All right, my voice is starting to give anyway, so um, let's do our, our prayers and then we'll move towards ending. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, thank you for this blessed day, and thank you for all that you do for all of us. Lord, today I ask you to continue to guide me towards you. Help us, all people, to find you, Lord, in everything and every day to find our ways to you. As always, we pray for those who are currently homeless or unhoused, who are out in the elements, who are risking heat stroke or freezing to death, the, the elements. Lord, help them to find shelter and love that they need to continue on. And Lord, we pray for those who are currently deceased, those in purgatory, those who need the most prayer to help them be welcomed into your ever-loving arms in the eternal kingdom. We'll do three Hail Marys for those in currently in purgatory. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Lord, I pray for my viewers who have asked me in private for the prayers for them. Lord, help them with their private prayers. And Lord, help Emmy with this job. I hope she gets it. Help her to get this job. Help her to move forward with her prayers. All this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can definitely add some prayers to St. Uh, Gemma next time. Sorry, I, I, I close my eyes when we do prayer time, so I didn't see that message uh, soon enough. Definitely apologize about that. Uh, thank you, everyone who's been watching. I know there's been some new people who have been lurking. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, make sure that you subscribe and sign up for notifications if you want to find out when I'm going live next. Hopefully, it should be tomorrow if all goes well. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel. If you want to catch more original content, there is more original content on my YouTube shorts and YouTube channel. And of course, my website has all my photography if you're interested in photography. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Have a wonderful and blessed evening and we'll see you again soon.